Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here. Welcome to part 11 of the Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin full playthrough walkthrough. In this part of the walkthrough, we're going to go through Shaded Woods and Doors of Pharos. Yeah, we will do both. We'll combine them. Doors of Pharos is pretty small, uh, and because we are currently in the Wrath Covenant that we joined in the Grave of Saints, it's going to be really easy for us. If you are not in the Rat Covenant, it can be a little difficult uh, because you will have a bunch of enemies coming after you, but if you're in the Rat Covenant, they stay passive. You can actually kill them, and I think they won't even do anything. We'll test that out. Um, anywho, let me show you my stats. Currently level 70, uh, 104, sorry. Currently level 104, 40 Vigor, 25 Endurance, 11 Vitality, 4 Attunement, 27 Strength, 16 Dex, 25 Adaptability, 4 Intelligence, 6 Faith. The Shaded Woods will require several Fragrant Branches of Yore, so if you have some, great. If not, it's not a huge deal, uh, but it does give you access to some things. Uh, you also want to have a couple of Pharos Lockstones, and the reason for this is because in the Doors of Pharos, there are a lot of places to put them, we're going to use one in a very specific spot, and you can actually glitch into an area that you would normally need, I think, three to open, and this gives you access to a really, really good weapon. Um, but I'll try to do it with one, and if I can't roll through the door, then we'll just open it completely. Um, yeah, so that's that. The other thing that you want to get is a ring, and that is the Ring of Whispers. The Ring of Whispers is sold by shall qua here in the house this door always closes and i don't fully understand why um but anyway shall qua will sell you this ring in her little uh, vendor area so let's buy an item and then we need the ring of whispers for 5800 so this ring allows us to hear enemies from further away this is supposed to like help you out i guess you know detect enemies but we're going to purchase it to speak with an npc who normally we would not be able to speak to uh, but you do need the Ring of Whispers. It's sort of like the old witch ring from Dark Souls 1 uh, that allowed you to speak with Quaylag's sister, the Fair Lady. Um, very similar purpose. Okay, so the Shaded Woods um, is our destination, which is through this little archway. I do want to say, if you've never joined me for these walkthroughs before, this is a casual Let's Play style walkthrough where I'm playing as I record and as I talk. Um, this, the whole purpose of these guides for the Souls series and basically any walkthrough that I make on this channel is to... Uh, make these games as manageable and relaxing as possible for you. Souls games are difficult, there is no doubt about that, but a lot of the difficulty comes from uh, bucking trends and subverting your expectations, because a lot of games these days you could s just sort of like go in guns blazing and not have to worry too much, you might die, but then you can like restart really fast exactly where you died and keep going. Souls games are not that way, you really do have to sort of play in a relaxed state, and if you panic, chances are you're probably going to die. So, trying to make this as manageable as possible for you. Okay. So, the Shaded Woods. This is actually like a two-part area, if you, if you will. Um, but you'll see what I mean. Alright. Let's go through here. And then we will come across an NPC. And this NPC will have a really familiar object that you may want but it's not real all right so let's talk with this gentleman here Have you business? what we're gonna do is we're just gonna exhaust his dialogue and then once it's exhausted go ahead and pick up the life gem and the homeward bone and we're gonna come in here and there are a number of enemies in this area so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open these doors because as soon as we sort of get moving, these enemies are going to come after us. Oops. And as you can see, they stack poison. And you don't want to deal with that. So make sure you open the doors and deal with them. Okay, very good. Alright, and then we are going to pull this lever, but we do need to... Uh, free this NPC. <laughs> Alright. So once we do that, we can speak with her. She's sort of afraid. She's backing up against the wall. I actually totally forgot about this NPC. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been... I'm fine. I think. Oh, no, no, no. I'm fine. 
meet my aunt? Um... My name is Rosabeth. Thank you so much for rescuing me. Oh. oh. You're that traveler. I still haven't thanked you. Well, I'm quite a hand at pyromancy. So perhaps you could consider this my thanks. I was attacked and turned to stone, I think. I owe you my life, if you have not come. Oh, I feel shameful wearing these rags. Um, I hate to burden you further, as you've already saved my life. But, just look at me. My clothes are in tatters. Do you have any clothing that you could spare? I'll take anything, whatever you don't need. I'm not particular when it comes to apparel. Anything at all will do. Just put it on the ground, and I'll change into it later. Okay, so this is literally what it sounds like. You're going to give her a piece of equipment, and then she's going to change it into it. So she changes into whatever you leave, however you cannot get it back. So only give her something that either you have a duplicate of, or you know maybe you don't really want, or you want to see what it looks like on somebody else, but just know that you cannot get it back. So don't give her any unique item sets. And you only have to give her, I think, one, one article. I don't think you have to give her everything. Um... Did I never get the gun, uh, the gauntlets for this? Cool. All right. Cool. Yeah. So she's your pyromancy vendor. Once you give her uh, clothing, she will move to Majula. Um, what I actually recommend doing is reloading the game right now, and this should move her to Majula. Um, and you want to do this because as soon as we pull the lever that she was petrified in front of, enemies are going to swarm this area, and you don't want to accidentally kill her. Because you definitely want a pyromancy vendor, right? Alright, there you go. So now she's in Majula. And then we should be able to talk to Benhart here. Oh, okay, so she's moved there. She'll move to Majula in a bit. No, no, no. Name's so this is Benhart of Jugo. I, I said, I should. And then you can learn the joy gesture. I, I said, I and then you can summon him in various places. Um, and if you kill him, you get the fake Moonlight Greatsword. So don't kill him. It's, it's not what you want. All right, so this door is going to close, and then, like I said, you're going to get swarmed. Uh, luckily, these enemies don't have much health, but they can stack poison really easily. Now. Okay, there's a basilisk. All right. There's more in here. So you do want to be careful. There is a bonfire, though. An Estes flask shard. Always helpful. And then you get a bonfire in here. So, it's right outside of Majula, but this helps you from having to uh, constantly... Like, light and relight everything. I don't know if there's actually anything up here. We're going to try, though. Oops. Looks like there's some enemies, which is interesting. I don't know about any items, though. Okay. This is weird. I don't remember this guy. So we'll, we'll come across these guys in a little while. 
in the doors of Pharos, actually. But I think what happens is if you were to pull the lever again... These guys would show up? I don't know. Anyway, let's just open the doors. Yeah, I don't know what these spikes are. Weird. I wonder if there's like some sort of trap in here that I'm like not aware of. Ow. Well, anyway, that's this little area. Now let's get into the shaded woods proper. Okay. And you know what's funny? Opening those doors probably just trapped me. Ah, somebody left so many messages here. Okay. So the shaded woods um, is an interesting area. And there's two forks for us to consider. And we, we will cover both of them. Oh. Unbelievable. Okay. And these guys are kind of hard to see. So you always want to be on the lookout. Sometimes they're like up on ledges. Yeah. See what I mean? gotta get new armor. I'm getting like one shot face. I'm, like I, I have no health. Okay, so there's another treasure over here. A Ferris lockstone, always helpful. And then we go in here. And we get this whole group of people. So pull these guys in. Wow, Just went right over their heads. <laughs> One HP. Alright. There we go. Soul of Proud Knight. Human effigy. Yeah, just wanna make sure you can like go up there. Okay. Cool. Go this way. And then we have another bonfire. Kind of weird there's like so many bonfires around here, but I don't know. All right, cool. So I am gonna go this way because I want to show you something. So this enemy here, this is a falcon soldier. He's got this falcon shield. And this area, or this enemy was added to this area along with a couple of others. So, the reason that they were added in Scholar of the First Sin was to make, to, to sort of like make the areas, or provide the areas with additional context. What I mean by that is there are now enemies from like a future area. Well, he's like Boogie. Uh, were, they added enemies from like the, the next area in, in the order of things. Um, to, like, make the area sort of, like, bleed together a little bit. In some games, like, when you go from level to level, and this was especially true in Dark Souls, when you go from level to level, the enemies change, like, very distinctly, very dramatically. It's like you ne you stop seeing certain enemies, and now you only see new ones. Um, so in Scholar, they added enemies from future areas to just try to help things a little bit. Oh! Forgot about these dudes. I thought that was a phantom. He's not targetable. Now. So this is like a phantom enemy. It's a real enemy, but it's just clear, you know? Okay. Cool, so we get the Dragon Slayers, Crescent Axe, and the Golden Falcon Shield. 
And then we have this pile of rubble with an item on the other side that we can't get over. It's like we're blocked because we can't jump. It's kind of lame. Um, but if we go up here, we get to a little spot called the Shrine of Winter. But when we approach the door, it tells us to seek mightier souls. And we have three of the four old souls, or lord souls, with us right now. But once we have all four, we will be able to open this door. It'll just open automatically. And that building can also be opened if you have one million soul memory. So if you don't want to, like, fight every boss in the game, the easiest way to get one million soul memory is to just um, keep fighting the rotten over and over and over again. Um, and you can just do that using bonfire aesthetics. But I just wanted to show you that Shrine of Winter and explain it in case you came across it. Anyway, Human Effigy, Large Soul of Pride Knight, and Twinkling Titanite on that ledge there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to rest at the bonfire that we lit a few seconds ago. And then we are going to move into the Shaded Woods proper, as I like to call it. Up here, um, went left. Let's go straight first. Oh, okay, never mind. We can't go this way. Um, well, I guess I'll show you this path too. It doesn't really matter. Um, but this leads to Aldia's Keep. Oh, these are the little enemies from Things Betwixt, actually. I think this leads to a Crystal Lizard. Now there's an ogre here. Hello. This was vanilla Dark Souls too. That grab would have caught me. All right. So he drops an old radiant life gem. I think this is poison swamp. Oh. I never actually had one of these things attack me. It's funny. Okay. This red tear stone ring. Actually, a pretty good ring. I think you get more, you do more damage when your health is low. Okay, so you see the message ring required ahead, so we'll talk about that. And we're gonna come across a door, yep. So this door requires the king's seal. And the king's seal is something that we will get much later in the game. Yeah, I guess not much later, but not now. Um, and then this door will be able to be opened. Uh, this door should look relatively familiar to you. Uh, there's, you should have stumbled across a couple already, um, but these are known as king doors, and you will need uh, the seal of the king, or the king's seal, in order to open them. So right now, we only have one path through Shaded Woods, and that is to go deeper into the actual Shaded Woods. So I'm going to rest at the bonfire one more time just to restore my flasks. I know I have another shard, so I could go get another flask, but eight is plenty for me. So this area uh, is a little tricky, I won't lie to you. I'm actually kind of tempted to pull up a map. So from the Ruined Fork Road bonfire, let's go up, and then we're going to go through like the white mist here. 
And Shaded Woods has like some really cool mechanics, but you can see these like phantom enemies. Oh man, the, the fog gets so thick. I recommend going through the shield. Um, yeah. I hate how you can't target these guys. It's like the worst part. And they're very smart, so they will like rope you into uh, other enemies. out of here now. Oh man, I'm like actually straight up lost. So it's just a circle. It's really not like a big thing. It's just a circle. Okay, cool. So here's the entrance. We're back at the entrance now. And then uh, there's Gower's Ring of Protection, Clear Bluestone Ring plus one, and then the old Sun Ring. So, wait, Creighton of Mira is here? Creighton of Mira. Shaded Woods. Oh, okay, okay. He, he's moved. They moved him in Scholar. I'm, I was looking at an old map. That just confused me. Okay, anyway, sorry about that. Okay, so we got... Gower's Ring of Protection, so we're going to follow the right side. This guy's still here, though. I'm going to attempt to kill him. The fact that you can't target these guys is, is the worst part. And then you, like, can't tell what's a player and what's what these, you know... And they move so well. It's like it's really hard to like keep track of them. There we go. Okay. Great. Go back over here. Okay, back at the entrance. Very good. Okay, so we're gonna follow the right, and then we're gonna find Gower's ring or Gower's ring of protection. Should be on a corpse over here. All right. So. Pretty sure. Nope, that's a. Is this a player? That was a player, son of a bitch. Okay. Boy's tells Maybe the treasures were changed here. Anyway, I want to talk about these trees. So, these trees aren't actually enemies, but if you touch them, they will moan, and then those phantom enemies will, like, sort of come to you. So, depends on what you want to do. If you hit them, okay. You know, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, but just know that that's what's happening. Enemies will start coming to you. Gonna walk around the shield up. So again, this area is just a big circle. Um, can't really get lost here. Oh, Jesus. I don't want to break... I don't think you can break steel chests, but I'm like not trying to find out. These are cliffs. You, you don't want to fall off. Old Sun Ring. Okay, so we're in the far corner now. Yeah, the, these are ledges. Okay. So there should be a treasure sort of in the middle here. Unfortunately, there is no way to, um, like, dissipate the fog. It's always like this. Ooh. Hey.
Did they change all the treasures in here? I feel like they actually might have. Anyway, once you start going up the hill, that's sort of when you're kind of done. Um, but we're not totally done. So let's come up here. We're going to light a bonfire just kind of for safety. Actually, I think there's going to be an NPC invasion here, if I'm not mistaken. So it's like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go back into the woods here. Shaded woods. Uh... Entering the first fog door, Jester's Rose, single most important item to equip when coming to this area. Nullifies enemies criticals. Can I be backstabbed? Um, uh, I'm just... I'm reading the wiki here just because I feel like a lot of treasures were changed. We did miss an NPC, which I knew. That's why I wanted to go back in. Um, okay, head back down the hill. Which of course, sold a soldier at Radiant Life Gym before, I guess. Head back right until you reach the entrance. Head straight through the trees. It's near impossible to describe exactly what the following item is. Okay. Okay, that ring is still there. Okay, yeah, we we did miss some items, so we gotta go back in the, in there. Luckily, most of it's dead, but okay. So let, let's go this way now. Hey, a chest. Okay. Oh, gee, that scared the hell out of me. I legit just like shook in my chair. I did not see that. Guy. Dude. That's a player. There's no way that's anything but a player. Okay, very good. Alright, so I'm pretty sure this is the chest with that ring that we got earlier. So this is the, the chest with the ring from earlier. So this is the old sun ring. Let's go this way now. We're gonna head up a ramp. God, this area is like really annoying. I'm glad that this area like isn't, oh, whoa, what? Wow, okay. Wow. Sure. Alright. Wow. That's crazy. kind of scary. Alright. So this should be the Claranthi ring plus one. Yes, very good. Let's change out our Claranthi ring for that. Okay, now we still are missing one ring and we haven't spoken to the NPC yet. 
So I'm going to try to run straight through. I'm pretty sure we will come across the other ring. Yes, here it is. Oh no, it's an amber herb. Okay, so this jar... Oh shit. So this jar we're going to become extraordinarily familiar with. Can you not break these at all? Okay. I guess you can't break these, but anyway... You can't break them with a bow, rather, but these jars build curse. But you can break them, and then, you know, the, the curse stops being emitted, so. You have recourse. Ugh. So this, this should lead us back to the entrance. So the wiki says just go straight through from the entrance and you'll find the other ring. Okay. Whoa, how many of these phantoms are there? I hate not being able to target these things. We're going straight through. And then we're looking for a corpse with a ring on it. There it is. This area so much, dude. It, it's funny, like, I wouldn't use this ring, but I, I, like, have to show you where it is. And this area just wastes so much time. Right, so this, this should be the entrance. Yep, okay. Head straight through the trees. It's the wiki even says it's near impossible to tell you where these items are. Solar name soldier two X Amber. Between two trees lies a chest. So we're looking for a chest in this general area. Trying to see if we can even see it. Man, I just I just feel like an idiot, like wandering the dark or wandering the shade here. pretty much dead, but... Oh, LOL, never mind. There's the moan from the tree. Oh, flasks, nice. So this, this was the other chest, right? 
This this was the first the first one. This goes back to the entrance. Alright, that's the entrance. So then we go straight through looking for a chest. Alright, well, this is the corpse from before, so it's really important that we visit an NPC here who's actually just a head. So this is the head of Engarl. Leave me be. I like it quiet. Leave me be. What business have you here, traveler? You may call me Vengal, if I deserve a name in this sorry state. It is rare to flap these gums. This is pleasant. Long ago, I was hired to defend the kingdom. I remember a long, brutal fight, and then... Somebody killed me. Or so I thought. I came to, and found myself like this. I don't know what explains it, but it's not so bad. Really. Now I watch the days go by, and gaze at the night sky, thinking of the finer things, far removed from war. I've grown weary of battle, but did not realize it until now. I know not what brings you on this journey, nor will I deign to ask. You may bear a great burden, don't we all? I prefer to stay my distance. But I want to warn you of something. My body. I see visions. My body, headless, raging without me. My body, wielding my sword, a sword forged only to kill. My body will show no mercy. If you see the wretched thing, stay far away. I learn new things every day. Things never learned in battle. And thanks to you, I've recalled the joy of conversation. If I can help you, if you require something, do speak up. Okay. So you get the decapitate gesture from Head of Vengarl. Uh, he'll also sell you the Claymore and the Greatsword, some destructive great arrows, uh, lightning urns, gold pine resin, and then the magic barrier miracle if you'd like. You can keep speaking with him. I cannot laugh. Um, and then he will tell you uh, a bit about him, and then like who he was, you know, he was hired to, Thank you. Uh, he, he was hired to defend the kingdom. He's originally from a land named Ferosa. And, uh, you know, his head has been separated from his body. So we need to uh, find his body. We'll do that in the next walkthrough. We will find it. It's actually right after a boss. Um, then if you put the two together, you can actually summon him <laughs> for fights. So it's pretty neat. Um, I did find another map while we were sort of looking, um, or while we were listening to Vengarl. I did find another map that should hopefully help a little bit more. So if we just head straight out here, actually if we sort of tilt this way, we should come across the chest. I was looking for. Player. 
Sunrise. This is the old Sunring, right? I'm like looking here, right? Like it's I'm like trying to triangulate. So then it should be straight past here. It just like never is. And I don't think that it was moved in Scholar. Here it is. Okay, well at least we found it that way. That was good. Man, that's pretty hidden. Alright, we can finally move on now. There's the clear bluestone ring plus one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to follow the left wall and then go up the hill. And we're going to rest at that bonfire. Okay. Oh my god, it's the entrance. I'm really glad we found it. That took so long. I feel like we were in here for 20 minutes doing nothing. Alright, that's to Vengarl. And this is the exit. Okay, great. So, you'll never have another area like this again. So, don't worry. That's the worst of it, and we got everything out of there. Whew. Alright. Let us... Uh, Let us rest at the bonfire, replenish our wares. Alright. Cool. So, we can see that this uh, little shortcut here is blocked. So this is a shade. Alright. And then... We're gonna come up here first. Radiant Life Gem, and then you can see a butterfly here, a poison butterfly, so go ahead and shoot that. Oh. Seems to have more health than they did in Huntsman's Cops. Okay. So you can see these little petrified enemies, and they're blocking certain paths. Um, there are a finite amount of fragrant branches of yore in each playthrough, and then there are the same number of... Uh, same number of statues to break. Um, I do want to be very careful the ones that we do break because we I think we only have three left. Yeah, we have three fragrant branches of your left, so I want to be very careful. Oh, four Lauren's back, of course. Yeah, I knew that I I knew there was an NPC invasion coming, I just wasn't sure exactly where. Forlorn's fight really never changes, so it's not a big deal. There he is. Man, he's so eager. Look at him. disagree, but... Ow. Yeah, he caught me there. He caught me rolling. One more hit. He gets, like, real smart on low health. There you go. Alright, I'm just gonna rest at the bonfire. human effigy before I do. Alright. Cool. So. I am just double checking here. Bonfire, Line Warrior, Fang Key. Okay. So we do want to kill that one. That guy should drop the Fang Key. And then this is Ornifex's area. Yeah, so we 100% want to clear out this side area. Okay. 
kill this guy, and then we are going to jump this ravine here. So you want to try to land in the vase so it stops putting out curse. There you go. Very good. All right, so in here, um, I guess you can't see them, but there's going to be a lot of basilisks, so be careful. And you can, of course, hear more curse jars. So the giggling that you hear, those are curse jars. So whenever you hear those, just sort of be ready. Um, all right, just because this is Scholar and not Vanilla, then key DS2. I just want to double check that this is uh, how to get it. Yes, okay. Great. So we're gonna use a fragrant branch of your free this lion warrior, and once it wakes up, we're gonna kill it. Then we get the fang key. Great. All right, so the fang key unlocks a door a little later on, and that door gives us access to um, an NPC named Ornifex. And Ornifex is our boss weapon vendor. Boss weapons. If you ever have a, a chance, I highly recommend you go check out a video. Um, it's a Dark Souls 2 animation. Really funny. Highly, highly recommend. Alright. So this guy. Got a helicopter going by overhead. Sorry for the noise. Oh boy, I messed that up. Man, you can't parry worth anything. Cyan's leggings. Warrior, Twilight Herb. I'm gonna drink just in case it's a booby trap. I don't think it is, though. Okay. Sublime Bone Dust. Great. Alright, so I am actually going to leave this guy because we sort of just skipped um, having to use the Fragrant Branch of by doing that jump. So. Black Knight Halberd. Great. Alright. Let me jump back over here. And then this is where that cursed jar was. And the Fang Key Lion Knight. Awesome. Okay, so you can rest if you like, but I'm not going to just because killed a bunch of things. Alright. Coming over here. The cursed jars are plentiful, so I can't be afraid to just roll into them. Alright, so I want to clear on top of the bonfire first. Let's go this way. Get this guy. Oh my good lord. Chunk. I could actually go level up my weapon if I wanted to. I needed one more chunk for a while. Okay, let's go to the left now. And then... So this guy's blocking a chest. What is he blocking? Go to the left. I think he's blocking... Maybe a human effigy times three. The maps are always a little hard to read. Let's go over here. So we got a shade here. All right. Flame butterfly and a torch. It's kind of like frustrating when the curse jars. What? Oh my god. When the curse jars start cursing you before you can even see them, it's just like a little frustrating. Yeah. 
And there's... Oh, God. Wow. Let's let that go down. Yeah, that's literally what I was saying. The curse jars that are doing that are underneath us, so we gotta run downstairs really fast. Great. Don't forget, though, you have a shade in here. Okay, very good. Soul Brave Warrior, Ferris Lockstone. And then, is there anything else in this room? So yeah, so those curse jars are basically like 360 degrees of curse. All right. So this guy is actually why we need the Ring of Whispers. We'll talk to him in a moment, though. Nice. Got a chunk from that lizard. That was fantastic. Dark Scythe. There's a lot of treasure in Shaded Woods. Okay, cool. So this guy is actually friendly, but speaking with him, uh, just dot, 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 question mark. But if we change out our ring for the uh, Ring of Whispers, we can speak with him. Human, are we? This is no place for you. Be gone. Are you not afraid of me? Humans rarely come here. Those who do, turn back when they see me. Or make an attempt on my life. But you... are different. We once had a master. He created us long, long ago. He was born with a fatal flaw. He resented those who had what he lacked and became fully mired in hatred. Eventually, he drove himself mad. It was at the peak of this madness that he conjured up we strange creatures. Our master was a tragically lonely soul. Eventually, his solitude eroded his very reason. In the end, he never understood what it was that he truly lacked. Nobody knows when we were born or where our master has gone. The only ones who even speak a human tongue are myself and my better half. I wish to ask a favor of you. I want you to kill my betrothed. Once, I always found her at my side. But as time went on, things went awry. She became violent, raging uncontrollably. Eventually, she came after me. We've been locked in combat ever since. We seem to be at a standstill. The wounds we exchange are never lethal. I was born of my master's madness. Perhaps this is some curse. I will be sure to assist you in return. The past is a distant fog. My name was Targ. That is all that I remember. Man, it's a lot of talking. So that is Man Scorpion Tark, and you can summon him uh, for the boss fight of Shaded Woods, which we will do. And that's that's the Ring of Whispers going off that growl. All right, how many fragrant branches have you ordered? I have two left. Okay. So let's unpetrify this guy. Kill him. And then I'm actually going to take off that ring because it's like super annoying. I'll go back to steel protection. Okay. 
So there is... Oh, God! Jesus Christ. So this is the body of Vengarl. I thought that it was actually in a different place. I'm glad we found this. That scared the hell out of me, though. This is the body of Vengarl. I could have sworn it was after Duke's dear Freya. Freya, however you say it. Anyway, that's the body of Vengarl. You get the rest of his armor set. And a torch. And then you actually come out on the other side of this guy near the bonfire. So that's why we don't unpetrify him. It's a waste. Sworn there was an illusory wall here. Maybe not. I just could have sworn this is like where I discovered illusory walls required you to press X. Alright. Cool. So, if you'd like, you can summon Man Scorpion Tark for the boss. We will not do that, though. It's not necessary. Alright. Now let's go do the rest of Shaded Woods. And we need that last Fragrant Branch of Yore to unlock the uh, Boss Armor Weaponsmith. Oh, that jar is on a shelf, in case you're wondering. Yeah, it's up there. That's an annoying one. All right, so we are not going to unpetrify um, really too many others, but there is a really big pit need to be careful of. Ow. Lion warrior skirt. Alright, so this guy, this, uh, I think this white or yellow main one. I'm pretty sure this guy has killed once, but he can drop uh, a really specific piece of armor that a lot of people farm for. So I think it increases your strength or something like that. But it's like, it doesn't, it's not a guaranteed drop. So you basically have to keep using bonfire um, aesthetics in order to get it to drop, which is like just a waste. Stone Soul of Rape. Warrior. And this guy is guarding a, uh, a corpse. I don't actually know what that corpse has. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, if you listen closely, you'll be able to hear what sounds like an owl hooting. And that is the the boss weapon vendor. So we gotta rescue him or her. I'm actually not sure if it's a man or woman. Gender is gender is convoluted in Dring Link. A lot of basilisks, so just be careful. This ooze degrades your gear, so be careful of that. Get these guys. Shit. Excuse my language. You gotta be really careful of that ooze, though. It can degrade your armor and weapons really fast, and that's the last thing you want when dealing with basilisks. You wanna be able to kill these guys quick. Night, and then we can use the fang key on this door. Don't freak out. Do not freak out. This person is friendly. Thank you for helping me. I am Ornifex. I owe you some form of thanks. 
but have nothing for you at the moment. If it would not trouble you, could you visit my abode just down the way? Thank you, kind traveller. I believe that I can be of assistance if you would visit me at my home. Thank you. Okay. So we have now freed Weaponsmith Born Effects, gotten a fragrant branch of yore. It's a corpse. And we will not um, be able to do much with Weaponsmith Born Effects for a little while. We can drop out here, and then this is back at the bonfire. So we got another fragrant branch of yore, and so what we need to do is gain access to uh, the upper ledge of that room, which is where a Dark Diver Grandal is sitting. All right, I'm pretty sure this is an Estes Flask shard, if I'm not mistaken. There's a left gen. I think they've, I think they moved. Thanks. Looking up maps for this game is like all fine and good, but a lot of times they're like really old. <laughs> and they're for the vanilla version of the game and not Scholar. Which can be a little frustrating. Um, but... Oh man, that was... I thought that was a player. These guys suck, man. I really hate these enemies. I think they're a cool idea. I just think they're like evil because you can't target them. Yeah, I have like nothing against them. I just wish you could target them. It just like doesn't make sense that you can't target them. That does not make sense to me. Alright. <clears throat> so Basilisk here. There we go. So this is the entrance to Dark Diver Grand Doll's little area. Let's open this chest. And we will do an entire walkthrough for Dark Diver Grand Doll. Um, but this is his second area. So you can join his covenant. Um, I think there might be a, um, like a... Maybe you have to be human or something. I can't really remember. Um, but we'll cover it later, but that's the entrance to his uh, other area. So he appears three times throughout the world. One of them is in like a really... I say this word a lot with Dark Souls, like a very dastardly location. Um, I'm going to rest and sort of reset, and then we're going to go to Majula and level up before we fight the boss, because we can actually do quite a lot at Majula. And then while this loads, that's this flask shard. Scholar, Shade of Woods. Old Akalair Bonfire. Oh, would you live? What is this called? Right, okay, so, got it. The SS Flask Shard that I thought was in Shaded Woods was the one that we actually got earlier, so no need to worry about that. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to save my chunks. I'm going to save this because, well, hang on. Let me, let me look up a weapon really quick. We're going to get it in the next area in this walkthrough. I don't, okay. St. Here's Spear. I don't think it could be upgrade. It's upgraded with Twinkling Titanite. Okay. Fine. Let's level up our Halberd. Go all the way to plus 10. Perfect. So now our Halberd is all the way leveled up because we got a slab. Whoa, excuse me. We got a slab way earlier in the game. Oh my god, that's terrible. Here to see, however. Oh my god. Left. There you go. Jesus. Okay. Cool. Level up. 
Uh, Saint Tier Spear 2022. I gotta level up decks a little bit more. Wow, what a great level. That was really good. So this is uh, Rosabeth. Oh, I'm here. And she wears whatever armor you give her, which I just think is funny. Um, so she sells Flame Quartz Ring, Thunder Quartz Ring, and Dark Quartz Ring. And she sells some Burrs, which temporarily, temporarily increase your um, your resistances. And then she also sells three Fire Seeds, which you can use to level up your Pyromancy Flame. And she sells various Pyromancies, so be sure to check back with her frequently. Okay. So now that we've done all that, let's go back to the Shaded Woods. The Shaded Ruins. Cool. So, now that we've done that, I am going to... We have two branches. Um, I am I'm gonna leave the rest of the statues. Uh, the reason for that is because I don't feel that it is particularly necessary to like get every single item out of this area. We got what I would deem important, which are the um, uh, the NPCs here. Um, you know, what, let's actually restore Vengarl. Let's speak with his court, but with his head again, um, and then we'll, we'll see how that goes. I do want to. Whoa. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's just go uh, speak with his head. All you gotta do is come down here and then just hug the right wall. Probably get some guys chasing us, but I'm not really very concerned at all. We don't have any souls. Right. Okay, let's speak with Vengarl. Back again? Well, this is a pleasant surprise. my body it is my body you see and I can sense what happens to it I do not mourn for it good riddance if you wish for help summon me I'm rusty in battle but will fight by your side I was born in for all okay so since we have uh, slain his body and let him know he is now uh, summonable for a couple boss fights. I won't summon him, but in case you're wondering how to make it so, that's how you do it. All right, now let's go fight the boss. Uh, before we do that, we will be running into Creighton of Mira. I think this Lion Knight's still gonna be here. Yeah, there he is, hello. So Creighton will be waiting for us in this little tower here, so let's break this. So we don't have to worry about curse buildup on the other side. And then let's go over here. And if you use a human effigy here, you'll see the uh, summon sign. For man, scorpion, Tark. There he is. I see him, but how do we get up there? Ah. Okay. 
See, I don't really understand why they moved Creighton here. Well, I, I guess I do, but I don't know. I, I don't think it was necessary. It feels like dramatic to move him. But let, let's speak with Creighton. <laughs> Just white, you dirty rat. Oh, I, I remember you. Don't you scare me like that. I thought you were him. That bastard with a ring lives in Brightstone Cove down the way. I'm gonna find him and settle the school. Nobody insults me like that. For the good of the world and for my own honor. I won't let that bastard live another day. <laughs> for the good of the I won't let Okay. I'm just double checking the wiki to make sure I didn't forget anything. So the repair sorcery is in the chest of the warrior's block and that you gotta unpetrify. And then the warlock mask is on another one. Alright, cool. So we are ready for the boss. So, Creighton is here sort of plotting his revenge against Pate, and we will run into them in the next part of the walkthrough. For now, let's fight the boss. So you can summon Man Scorpion Tark. Um, he's decent, but you will still have to deal most of the damage. That's weird. Um... This boss can burrow into the ground and then come back. So you gotta watch out for that. You can cut off her tails. I actually recommend doing it. Uh, but she has really strong magic that you've really gotta watch out for. Well, let's go for it. And this boss is one of the few that doesn't have a cutscene. So this is the boss. But once you hit her once, or get close to it at least, this is the real boss. But since we now have a plus 10 weapon, a little bit easier. God, she tracks like crazy. You, you can cut off the tail. Her tail's a... Her face, or her body, is the weak point. Very similar to Quaylag from Dark Souls 1. It's actually a pretty similar fight. Um, now. She does have really strong... Ow, damn, dude. She does have really strong magic, though. You gotta watch out for that. She's actually going to cast it now. Yeah. So she does have homing crystal, or homing soul mass, I should say. And then she has this big one, right? But she really only casts that if you're, like, far away from her. So now we got to worry about this. So you want to sort of kite her over here. And then when she pops up, she should break this branch. Yep, there you go. And that'll give you an item. Flame Butterfly. That's how you get that. If you don't get that uh, that way, you kind of can't get it, but it's, it's really not a big deal. I mean, it's a Flame Butterfly. It's not getting the right I'd really love to break the tails for you. It's really not a big deal if you don't break the tails. It's really not the end of the world at all. <sighs> you just sort of run in circles and she kind of won't be able to do much. Just pay attention to the dust on the ground. She'll pop up eventually. That's it. That's Scorpionus Najka. 
And then what we can do is we can go speak with Tark again, and doing so um, will allow us to get another Fragrant Branch of Yore. Um, alternatively, you can wait to speak with him until you defeat the next, uh, I guess we'll call him like Primal Boss or Old Soul, old soul Boss. Um, you can do that instead. Either way, it's up to you. Um, you get an item for killing each and then speaking with Tark. So it's really up to you. Let's get this shade down here and deal with him. There we go. Cool. So let's put the Ring of Whispers back on. Defeated my better half. This is my thanks. Take it. I have no gods to pray to. But still, I pray that your journey will be safe. And then you get the warm up gesture. I have no. But still. All right, and then that's it for Tark. Uh, at least for now. Uh, we will return to him one more time after we kill a boss named Duke's Dear Freya. Um, and then we will get another item from him. But that's it for now. I don't actually know if he can be summoned for Freya. I kind of don't think so, but... You know, I don't know Dark Souls 2 as well as the rest of the series, so don't necessarily quote me on that. Um, you know what? Since we have several fragrant branches of yore now... We've got... I have no idea where it was. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this. I really hate this growling. Human FG bleeding serum. Very good. And then the warlock helm is guarded by. Yeah, the warlock helm is guarded by this one. We still have one more branch. That's nice. You guys have cool moves sometimes. That's the Warlock Mask. Alright, so now we're, we're pretty much done. Uh, so now let's go into the Doors of Pharos. It's a really short area, like I said, especially since we are in the Rat Covenant. Uh, that will make it... Oh, that had a cool Castlevania sound. Uh, that'll make it so we don't really have to fight much. If you are not a member of the Rat Covenant, and you've gone through Grave of Saints, just warp to the bonfire after the boss down there, Royal Rat Vanguard and uh, you'll be able to join. I do need to look up a map of the area because I want to make sure that we get the saint here Spear, which is a weapon that I want to use for the rest of my playthrough, if we can. There will be a bonfire here. So I'd like to make sure. Sometimes there's like items hidden behind. So these are the doors of Pharos. And there's a bonfire, like, through this little archway. Now, I'm not sure... Okay. It's fine. So we have these big mastodons, which are actually pretty cool. I like them a lot. They can deal a ton of damage. I don't... Yeah, they can't be backstabbed. They're too big. I'm pretty sure you can get their weapons, though, which is pretty nice. We're gonna come up here and kill this germ warrior. At least that's what I call him. I don't actually know what to do. I mentioned before, we're gonna be finding some of these guys. So there you go. Dragon charm. Cool. Alrighty. 
Whoa, double piece. That's nice. So there is a bonfire beneath us. Does this go straight out? Alright, so this will go to Brightstone Cove, Seldora, which we are not going to go through. Right, so this pathway will take us to a new area called Brightstone Cove, Seldora. However, not quite ready for that just yet. I do just want to double check that this is where it's going though, because it's it's been a while. Like, I was sworn that there was like a different path. Ow. Yeah, I'm like 99% sure this is going outside. We don't want to go this way. We will go this way in the next walkthrough. Instead, we are going to do the doors of Pharos. I thought that this exit was actually further up. That's why I was a little confused. Yeah. So the doors of Pharos is this cool little area. Totally optional. Um, does have a boss. Which is, honest to God, probably the most annoying boss in the game. I feel like I've said that about a couple of them so far. Um, it's basically Sif from Dark Souls 1, but with some adds that don't add anything to the fight other than artificial difficulty. Alright. Let's go down here. And then there's a treasure here. This is where we fought that Mastodon before. And we can go down here, and there is a bonfire. Awesome. So... I do want to go back to Majula because we need to level up a couple stats. We're about to pick up the Santir Spear. Yes. I need one more dex point, so I'm going to crack open a couple souls. Although what's funny is I'm going to come back here to upgrade this thing anyway. Yeah. That's okay, though. I don't even know if this is enough. I feel like I'm, I'm like, high level now. Cool. 20 and 22. Alright. So, let's go to the Doors of Ferris, the Germs Respite Bonfire. It's funny, I thought I was doing this in the order of the bonfires, but I didn't. Technically, we should have done this before the well. Anyway. Germs door is in the middle of the right-hand wall, entering the main room. Okay. Cool. So, you technically only need one... Lockstone to do this. Right, so because we are in the Rat Covenant, the enemies aren't going to attack us. So this big door here has three lockstones. But if you look closely, you only need one. There's no purpose of opening this door entirely. So we've fit one here, and this goes down, and then you could just walk in. Congratulations. And then there's a chest here. And inside is the Santir Spear. Okay, so I want to talk about this weapon. The Santir Spear has this, like, rock on it, and it's pretty slow. But if you deplete the durability, it turns into a really quick spear. Um, so... 
What we gotta do is, I think we can just hit a wall. Um, there's like a quick way to break this. Ways to break the stone head. Hitting walls. Alright, so there's a quick way to do it. You can do it actually hitting corpses, which I didn't know. So, let's go out here. Go to the bonfire, and then we're going to take a really quick warp to Forest of the Fallen Giants. Uh, first bonfire, Forest of the Fallen Giants. Lure about four enemies, try to kill them in a way that all fall in the same location. All right. We've lured them all, and then... I don't actually know how this is working. Hitting corpses will break it? Really? I have literally never heard of this. Is this... I have to look this up to see if this is still true. Breaking Centaur Spear. This isn't things betwixt. Apparently, attacking the crows does it too, so let's do that. That sounds better. This this isn't working. The, the weapon degradation is not even moving. It's where the things betwixt bonfires before, is after Majula, by the way. This is working, okay. So we're gonna do this until the weapon breaks. This should only take a minute. So technically there's an enemy here, or something here. It's the crows, but they're invisible and they can't be killed. So, but like the, their hitbox is still there, it still exists. Yeah, that works too. And you can just look at your, um, you can just look at your... 
equipment squares down there. And you'll notice that the red bar underneath the weapon is degrading as we do this. And the reason we do this is because breaking the head uh, causes the weapon to uh, become really fast. And then we can upgrade it using Twinkling Titanite, and then it becomes incredibly strong. However, if I feel that this doesn't do a ton of damage compared to my plus 10 halberd, we'll just switch back. I have gone through the entire game with a plus 10 halberd, but kind of wanted to do a Saint Tier Spear build, because it's relatively fun. But we're already halfway done here, so just another minute and we'll be, we'll be done. It's funny, I think you can hear them, like, I think they do react to getting hit, but, like, nothing actually happens. Anyway, doing it this way allows you to uh, do two hits, which is nice. Uh-oh. I thought I was going to fall. Nah, I don't want to get tricky. Uh, if you die without breaking it, it'll replenish, so you want to you wanna make sure you don't fall off while doing this. But. It's like one of the cooler mechanics of Dark Souls 2 is the spear. I actually don't even know who, like, found this. So I do want to mention a YouTuber named LOL Cats. Uh, I'm using their strategy. Their video is called Dark Souls 2 How to Break Saint Tier Spear Really Fast After Patch. So thank you, all cats. And I will leave a comment. So once it breaks, you'll notice that the head or the sort of like boulder on the end breaks off. And then things get really fast. One or two more. There you go. So now it's a really fast spear. It's crazy. It's such a cool weapon. Yeah. I guess it does have heavy roll now. That's fine, though. The amount of damage it does is well worth it. And then we can always uh, reduce our equipment load. It's it's almost even worth just doing it naked. But Let's go to Majula, level it up, and then we will go through Doors of Pharos. So Doors of Pharos um, does have quite a lot of treasures in it. Um, I'm not really going to worry about them. Um, Saint Tier Spear. I'm just reading the treasures. A lot of the doors just have enemies. Yeah, okay. Really not much to worry about. Saint Tier Spear is the big one. Let's level it up, though. Alright, so I'm a plus four. I don't have enough Twinkling Titanite. But I'm almost positive this is way stronger than my Halberd. Oh, the Halberd's still a tiny bit stronger, but the move set on this thing is so good. Yeah, it hits so many times. Um, what is my equipment load? Why am I on it? 55. Alright, yeah, let's get rid of the shield. Okay, back to Doors of Pharos. Germs Respite. And then now we're going to fight the Royal Rat Authority. <sighs> the Royal Rat Authority is frustrating. Um, I, I can't put it any other way. It is quite literally uh, the fight with Sif. It's the same thing. Um, it's just... Um, it just has ads, which, in my opinion, do not add any value to the fight. Um, or even any, like, complexity or anything. It just makes it annoying. But that's what we have to deal with. Um, if Again, if you are not in the Rat Covenant, this is going to be really... This area is going to be quite different for you. So I recommend just joining the Rat Covenant so you can get through this area. I'm going to light my torch just to be a completionist. 
Um, if you're not in the Rat Covenant, all these enemies will be hostile. I don't recommend um, opening any doors or anything. The vast majority of them are just um, enemies. So just leave them. But you can always collect uh, Ferris Lockstones and come in here and open up some doors. And the Rat Covenant is actually a lot of fun in here. This ladder is a little hard to see because it's just carved out of the mountain here. Yeah, there's a ladder. Twisted barricades, so I'll night like this. Oh, these guys are friendly too. Okay. It's funny because the ones outside of the doors are not friendly. And you can just push them, which is funny. Alright. So we got a chest here. Nope. Chunk, petrified dragon bone. Screw is like a little thing there. Oh, it's uh, it's a blade. So there's like really cool booby traps that you can set, and one of them is a blade. It's almost like the rips off from Unreal Tournament '99. Okay, Ferris Lockstone. And we have a couple choices. So to the left is the boss, but let's go to the right first. Maybe those guys are the blade. Shooters. Can't really remember. Either way. Our soul brave warrior. Yeah, this area is a lot of fun. It's a it's a really really unique idea. I'm going there in a second. I'm trying to make sure I didn't forget anything. So we get a bonfire here, which is very nice because this boss is rough. But it's literally just Sif with um, with ants. So if you like, you can try to take them out with arrows. I'll show you how to do that. It, it's a really tough boss. There's like no way around that at all. Um, but we can try to come over here and then big dog is up on that ledge. It will wake up. Oh my god, that frame rate is... There you go. Watch out for the big one. Ugh, the tiny one... The tiny ones can curse you, so you gotta be really careful. Yeah, I need to heal. Right. So, we're actually in a pretty good place, which is nice. I don't want to get too saucy with my attacks. You always want to be able to roll away. Uh, the dog does, or the rat does have, is it a rat? Is it a dog? Who the hell knows? It does have a vomit though, so when it does that, you want to be really careful. I'm really glad we were able to aggro those rats and deal with them quick. Because the fight does get pretty tough if you're unable to do that. Yeah, that attack has such a delay on it. It's, it's crazy. Now. I wonder if you're able to kill it before it vomits. Pretty cool. The music is really lame, too. All right, so here comes the vomit. We could kill it really fast, though, but just get out of the pool. Otherwise, you will die. All right. So you get the Royal Rat Authority Soul and a Rat Tail, and then that's it. So this is... That's the one we killed, I guess? I don't know. I don't get it. Either way, once you're done... You can now exit, and then the gentleman rat 
for the Covenant will be out here as well. Right here. Speak thy mind. So it's the same, it's the Rat King, same guy. Um, same deal. So you can offer Rat Tails. You can talk to him, do what you want. Uh, but then you're done. So that is the area. Um, popping out here will lead you down the path to Brightstone Cove, Seldora. For now, though, we will rest at the bonfire. Um, if you'd like, I I think this area, the Doors of Pharos, is like one of the best ideas Dark Souls 2 has. Um, it's just a cave with a bunch of traps. And the way that the, um, the Covenant works is that you can... Um, like, if you're in here and you're online, you're wearing the Covenant Ring, you can uh, summon people into your world just by standing here. Um, and if they're online and, you know, they're human and they go in here, uh, chances are they can get summoned into your world. And then if you have all the traps set up, the traps can kill them, which is cool. Um, if you, like, fully max out the place, they sort of have, like, no chance in hell of making it through, so they're just going to die really fast. It's cheap, but it's fun. I think it's a cool idea that they haven't done again, but... Anyway, let's go back to Majula. We'll end the walkthrough. I don't have enough to level up. Um, that's okay, though. This was a fun walkthrough. I really do enjoy uh, these two areas. Doors of Varus is fun. Uh, but we will end it here. Actually, let's triple check here. Triple, triple check that I can't do it again. Nah. Oh, we only need 200. Let's see. What's the scaling on this? Okay, so there's no scaling, I guess, on this. Um, let's let's do ourselves a service, though. A couple of these. Six thousand. That's way too much. Anyway, let's level up once. I'm gonna go ahead and put. Um, I'm gonna go vitality, just because I want to be able to carry more, and that'll help my health as well. All right, that's going to be it for this part of the walkthrough. In the next walkthrough, we're going to go through Brightstone Cove, Seldora, and kill the fourth, uh, sort of, Lord Soul, Old Soul boss, uh, Duke's Dear Freya. We will also visit uh, Weaponsmith Ornifex, and we will see the conclusion of Pate and Creighton's storyline. There will be two bosses in that walkthrough. Uh, the first is Prince and the Revolution. Just kidding. The name is Prowling Magus and the Congregation, but... I always just call Prince in the Revolution. Um, and then after that, it's uh, Duke's Dear Freya. It's a hard area. No lie about that. Uh, but we should be able to make it through without too much of an issue. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, please subscribe to the channel. See, get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.